Thank you, Anna-Marie, for joining us. Soon you will be on stage. Great. Thank you, Otto. I'm just going to share a quick video here so that we can um, learn a little bit about the well building standard and the health safety rating, and then I'll go into my presentation. Confidence in your efforts in creating safe spaces. Introduced by the International Well Building Institute, the world's leading certification body for healthy buildings, the Well Health Safety Rating for Facility Operations and Management is an evidence-based framework combining research, resources, and protocols to help you prioritize strategies to implement in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. It also allows you to third-party validate the actions you have already taken. The Well Health Safety Rating covers cleaning and sanitization procedures, emergency preparedness programs, health service resources, air and water quality management, as well as stakeholder engagement and communication. The Well Health Safety Seal is a visible mark of your organization's commitment to the health and safety of your employees, visitors, and other stakeholders. Let the Well Health Safety Seal do the communicating for you. Learn more about the Well Health Safety Rating at wellhealthsafety.com and enroll today. Okay, so what I want to talk today about is this idea that um, our genetics are the only thing that's responsible for our state of health. We're actually, the majority of what influences our health today is based on the physical and social environments in which we live and work. That means that the built environment is really important. How the spaces are designed, as well as people's living conditions and how we behave, whether we smoke, whether we eat, what we talk about and the design of our environment has a significant impact on our mental health. Just ask yourself a quick question. What is my environment like today? <clears throat> and how is my environment different than my grandparents or my parents? How have things really started to change? And how much time do you typically spend indoors? And indoors doesn't just mean not being outside, even driving in a car is considered indoors. And this is a very interesting quote from Dr. Joseph Allen who was working with us after the COVID-19 pandemic started, really to understand that buildings are a tool to advance public health and it allows people to better protect themselves and their environments. So a little history about where WELL came from. We started in 2014 with the WELL building standard being launched after six years of intense research with the medical profession, architecture and engineering. We then returned to the market with a master planning program called WELL Community to help design neighborhoods and small communities. In 2018, we launched the WELL V2 pilot. And just this past year, we've been able to upgrade well out of pilot into well V2, which is what Otto was sharing. And what's really exciting to know about well is that it leverages not only design, <clears throat> but policy and operational strategies to improve human health and well-being. The 10 concepts that we focus on, such as acoustic quality or thermal comfort, can all help the environment promote healthy eating, physical activity, and even cognitive health. Well is grounded in research, and it's really important here to notice that the way that you ground research is by bringing together both business, human, and business ideas. And this means that we're really understanding industry-led research, public health research, and applied research and really understanding how we can grow our well features to really communicate the evidence that we're seeing in the research industry. We've also feel very proud <clears throat> to work in conjunction with a range of green building rating systems around the globe, because we believe that building performance for health requires a commitment to sustainability. We all know that we spend over 90% of our time indoors and the countless buildings that we encounter can either negatively affect our life or positively. 
So we're really understanding now for the first time that the second wave of sustainability is, a, is about the potential for buildings to promote health and wellness. We were obviously all struck with en enormous sadness and um, fear back in March of last year when the global pandemic hit across Europe and North America. Now we're understanding that the impacts of climate change, which is pushing everything to the limits, we have the opportunity to do something better in the world. And it's obvious that with climate change, we need to understand how this affects the biosphere and how the biosphere creates more opportunities for viruses and bacteria to get into spaces that they weren't in before. So in, in March of 2019, I'm sorry, 2020, the IWBI pulled together the task force for COVID-19. And we had an incredible response from our community. We had over 600 public health experts and professionals across real estate, medicine, and government to really work together and help us understand how we can set aside some guidelines to help companies, residences, schools, open up and be ready for the global pandemic to ease and allow people back into their buildings. So the short video that you saw earlier was around the health safety rating, which is our newest tool that has come out from the well building community. And it really helps companies understand what are the key elements that we need to be thinking about as we decide to open our buildings. And that includes operational policies, maintenance protocols to look at things like air and water quality management. Really important to put in place emergency recovery plans, which most of us did not have when we had to all start working from home. And the most important topic here is how do we communicate what's typically invisible in buildings like air and water quality management to the people who occupy the buildings to give them more confidence and security that they're coming back to a space that has been well cared for and ready for them to occupy. A lot of people ask me this question, why, why should we certify buildings? What's important with that? Well, I think it's in a world today, in a world today where third party metrics and transparency around the proof that you've done what you say that you're doing, I think is gonna be more important than ever, especially as people need to feel confident returning to work. So third party verification gives your company that level of security and knowledge that you've done what you said you were going to do and the services that you've designed are actually performing. And one of the hallmarks of well certification, um, which is absolutely sets us apart from most of our building rating systems around the world is on-site performance testing. And this is involving things like air quality, water quality, acoustics, and lighting, some of the four key areas of driving healthy building design. As Otto showed on one of his slides, we have 10 key concepts which represent the health and well-being approach to designing buildings. So we look at things that are related to lighting, acoustics, material selections, air quality, community, and a really important concept, which we're gonna dive into a little bit more detail today is mind and mental health. And it's important to know that about a third of all the well criteria are policy-based, which means that they come from both HR and facilities management, which really helps cover the approach to how we manage these buildings going forward. And I'm really proud to say that I, you know, well is something that really looks at how we can optimize behavior. So for example, we look at things like nutrition and really help, <clears throat> help understand if we prepare and offer healthy food in our environments, there's a greater chance that we can modify human behavior so that healthy food becomes the natural and easier option to choose. So let's dive into a little detail around the concepts of mental health. While some people think that stress can be positive, it does cause our body to release hormones, 
that help us to respond to changing environments. But if it's persistent, stress can negatively impact psychological and physical well being. And stress is always a term that we use to describe a state of worry or feelings of being overwhelmed. And these feelings can increase the risk of depression, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and even upper respiratory infections. So it's really important here to note that mental health is a fundamental component of human health across all stages of life and is vital for psychological and social well being of both individuals and communities. So, as we start to explore some of the concepts that we use within MIND, it's important to understand that the workplace is increasingly being seen as an important target for mental health promotion, prevention, and intervention. It's estimated that 18% of adults will experience a common mental health condition, whether it's anxiety, depression, or substance abuse over a 12 month period. And over 30% of adults will experience a mental health condition during their lifetime. So here's a couple of features that are covered in our well mind category. <clears throat> Most important, we are looking to promote mental health through policy, <clears throat> program, and even design strategies to seek diverse factors that influence cognitive and emotional health. In combination, these interventions have the potential to positively impact both short term and long term mental health and well being. Here's a quick view of a mind fitness room installed in a project in Tokyo. And this is an activity that's really based on Zen and it's been shown to have an impact on workers physically, mentally, and behaviorally leading to increased productivity. So in this project, <clears throat> a dedicated space for mind fitness has been established to create an environment where mind can be performed effectively. This is where we talk a little bit about design strategies. So we look to design restorative spaces in well buildings and restorative spaces can be therapeutic functions, which can reduce stress and cognitive fatigue, a place to get away, a place to reset and charge. And one of the most important areas that we can provide this sort of recharge space is through nature and nature can be incorporated into the indoor environment using pictures, sounds, indoor plants, even water features. Some examples of biophilia in the workplace include windows that face nature and increase incoming daylight, interior water features or plant walls, patterns or colors that represent natural environments. This is a quick image of the first well-certified hotel <clears throat> in California. And it's, you know, you can actually start to see here what's the most powerful concepts here, which is natural materials and how our health and our natural intuition is to want to be closer to more natural materials, wood, plants, daylight, views. These are all natural conditions that really encourage us to feel healthier and stronger. And we talk really about the impact here. We know that improvements to mental health literacy and efforts reduce the stigma that mental health is negative. We wanna be able to include promotions of positive work environments, providing stress management programs and strategies that address the gaps in access to support of mental health. So this is just a quick snapshot of a well precondition. So this is, this is a feature that has to be met for well. And it's really important here because you can see here, we're looking to provide a connection to nature. And this is more about how many plants you have in your space. It includes all the design elements that we've spoken about before. Patterns, material selection, light, water, views to the outside. 
Here's a great example of, of biophilia in practice. And biophilia, if, if no one's really aware of it, is the human's natural connection to nature and really important as we look at how we design spaces to give people that, that connection. So this is a, an internal atrium that was transformed into a biophilic environment accentuated by nature sounds and plants. The second topic that I wanted to briefly discuss is our concept of community. This is the last section within the well standard of the 10 concepts. And it's really important that we start to really bring in all the elements of our community, different people who require different types of work environment for their, their sense of well being. And one of the areas that I wanted to highlight today is this topic of neurodiversity. And this is really about, you know, designing spaces that are equitable. You know, there are people in today's world that find um, high levels of noise very distracting. So how can we start to design the spaces that are inclusive and accessible for all, not just compliant with the the average building code for accessibility, but going above and beyond to support diverse ability from very different backgrounds. I also wanted to talk a bit about the importance of really looking at affordability in this world. And um, Well is really making incredible strides at looking at health and well being across affordable housing communities. We're also looking at just taking a look at environments like certain office environments where you can really start to see the use of materials and healthy selections. Uh, this is a workplace in Australia that really starts to bring in that green environment inside the space with lots of natural daylight. And this last slide is just a couple of images of different well certified projects around Europe and around the world. And you can start to see how both color, material selections, spaces where people can exercise, where people can get away from doing the day-to-day -day job is actually having a huge impact on both mental and physical health. So I just wanted to say thank you for being invited today. It's lovely to be able to reach such an interesting audience in Hungary. And I hope that one day the COVID-19 crisis will be done and I'll be able to come back and visit. Thank you. Thank you.